high. It's the Orient in three days. He rose again. decided to call men and women to preach, you took the risk of putting treasure in trash. Treasure in an earthen vessel that the excellency, the resurrection power might be of thee and not of us. Hide me behind the cross, cover me in your blood. Come Holy Spirit, come with hearing, teaching and preaching power. In Jesus name, amen. Come on, let's celebrate the music of ministry. Come on, y'all can do better than that. We always ought to celebrate when people yield themselves to ministry. Amen? This is not a performance. This is the house of God. This is, this is church. Amen? When the people of God come together. You might stand if you would as amen and ministers and choir members. They used to say, do unto others as you would have them do unto you if you were standing here. Amen. amen. The gospel according to Luke, verse 24. Mm -hmm. right. Verse, excuse me, chapter 24, verse 13. In the NIV. It says, now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And um, they were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself, not an angel, himself, came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces were downcast, one of them named Cleophas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? In other words, what's up with you? And he said, what things? He said about Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, he was a prophet, powerful in the word, indeed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him, man. And we had hoped that 
he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since they, all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. You know, they, in other words, they don't really know what they're talking about. You know, they were chauvinists. Y'all know that, right? They went to the tomb early this morning, and they didn't find his body. They came and told us they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women said, but they didn't see Jesus. So we don't really believe it. Then Jesus said to them, how foolish are you? And how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further, but they urged him strongly. One of them said, stay with us, come in, for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread and gave thanks. He broke it, began to give it to them. Then their, then, then their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning? Did not our hearts burn within us while we talked with him on the road? And he opened the scriptures to us. They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. They, there they found the eleven and those with him and assembled together and saying, It is true, it is true. The Lord is risen and appeared to Simon. And then the two told what had happened to them on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke bread. Didn't our hearts burn? I want to talk this morning, if you help me, on grace that sets your soul on fire. While you're sitting down, tell somebody there is a grace that will set your soul on fire. I must um, begin here by saying that the world and too often the church has so often messed up Resurrection Sunday. We call it Easter, which has all kinds of derivatives in that name, but the early church said Resurrection Sunday. And so many, calling it Easter, have commercialized They'll sell you a car on Easter. Sell you furniture. Sell you clothes. And some folk in the world, sometimes even in the church, only like Easter because they know they're going to get a long weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. For some folk, it's the one time a year to come to church. But this is... Resurrection Sunday. This is the remembrance of the worst week ever in the world. And yet the week that changed the world forevermore. This week, evil did its worst. And God did his best. The week had ended in our text. It had been a bad week. Some to say the worst week in human history. Uh, God had allowed God's self to be placed on a cross and die for humanity. And, and, and if that doesn't, doesn't make you just kind of shiver a little bit. The God who is eternal Submitted himself to time. Yes. Hmm? 
that, that you and I in time might gain eternity. And he did it for sins he did not commit. Jesus was pure in every way. He had all power. Not just after the resurrection, but when he came out of the wilderness, the Bible says he came out in the power of the spirit. He had power over the water, the waves, the elements, the body. And yet, he held back his power and allowed the puny powers of this world to take him into an unjust court at night. You know that you know it was bad when they had court at night. They took him to court at night. They lied on him. They entered into a collusion and obstruction of justice. Watch out, man. Watch out, The pre- I mean, Herod the king. And the religious leaders were the crooks. Just like we've seen this week, they had somebody like Attorney General Bob Caiaphas to twist the true report and make the real criminals not guilty while they criminalize innocent people. Didn't we see it this week? If I might for a minute, Trump is according to his own attorney general, no criminal. But we worship the resurrected Jesus. We who do that would do well to pay attention in society who's being called a criminal and who's not. Because the gospel is clear. Jesus was numbered with the transgressors. To translate that into our 21st century context, Jesus was considered illegal by the ruling authorities of his day. His triumphal entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday was an intentional demonstration of people power over against the ruling authorities. By blessing and healing rejected people of Palestine, Jesus had built a popular movement that mimicked the pageantry of Rome to celebrate the revolutionary vision of God's reign, which was a counterculture to the reign of Caesar. Rome would come into town on a horse. Jesus came into town on a donkey. Rome would lay down cloths of silk for their rulers. For Jesus, they just laid down the leaves of a palm tree. Rome would steal the money. Jesus drove the money changers out of the temple and celebrated Israel's ancient vision that the stones that the builders rejected has now become the chief cornerstone. I wish I had a praying church. And for doing this, for taking on the authority, Jesus was crucified as a criminal because the movement he had started threatened the established order on earth and in the kingdom of the devil. It established, it threatened the order that was maintained by the political and religious authority. And so Jesus was executed. If it had been today, he'd have got the electric chair or lethal injection. They crucified him as a protester, as a revolutionary. And there were two criminals with him. They had violently sought to steal the power of Caesar and, 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 and overthrow his power with violence. One was on his right hand, one was on the left, but Jesus was nonviolent. And thought to only overthrow the kingdoms of this world and the kingdom of the enemy with truth and love and grace. And yet, he was crucified. And the scriptures were fulfilled. He was counted with the transgression. I don't know if y'all ready to handle this, Greenleaf, but if you touch your neighbor and say, love will get you killed. Love 
in a world that's so bent on hate. And we can see today, this week, in some ways that look like the week to over 2,000 years ago, Trump with his false prophet enablers have been at pains to prove that he is no criminal. While on the other hand, they are criminalizing innocent, undocumented Americans, refugees, and asylum seekers. And guess who Jesus would be with? Jesus would be in the cages. Jesus would be on the border. Jesus would have been caged and incarcerated in America today. While some are criminalizing brown-skinned immigrants and blaming immigrants for the problems they did not create. The immigrants aren't the cause of job loss. They aren't hurting the economy. They aren't the ones really bringing the drugs here. They aren't causing crimes, and they are not an infestation. They are human beings. Yet, like in Jesus' day, this is the latest installment of divide and conquer by those in power. And in order to kill Jesus, they had to criminalize him. They had to turn the people against him 2,000 years ago. The people who wanted everything to stay in the status quo had to criminalize Jesus just like they're criminalizing immigrants today. Huh? And while the president and his justice department mocked the laws written to constrain their power, they then turn around and use the law to create scapegoats who bear the burden of our present crisis, and this is the same thing that happened to Jesus. Jesus stood with the wrongfully criticized, which is why those in his day had to identify him as an enemy. Jesus was seen as an enemy of the state, all because he loved the people they hated. I, I know something about being that kind of enemy, people making you out to be that kind of enemy when you love people they hate. Amen. Jesus loved the poor. He loved the lepers. He loved the outcasts. He loved the sick. He loved the women. He loved all those that church folk and society didn't want to have nothing to do with. And you try it today. Try loving the poor and loving the people we've made lepers today the gay and others, loving those on the margins, yes. loving the outcasts. Uh -huh. uh, and don't you watch if some, if some church folk won't hate you. Hmm? Jesus had too much love. Too much love for everybody. And Herod and Caesar could not allow a false religious leader in their mind they couldn't allow that because the people worshipped him and adored him and they wanted the people to worship and adore them. So they couldn't have competition. So they wanted to stomp out the fire of this movement. It had been a bad week. And, and, and it had been rough for Jesus from birth. Y'all praying with me? You see, Jesus was forced to be an illegal immigrant when he was born. And now at 33, and I thought about that 33, you know sometimes God does so much with young lives. Uh, Jesus in the flesh wasn't but 33, and here at 33, he's criminalized among the transgressors. He is the incarnation of God in the earth, and yet he's crucified by the state for being a revolutionary, and he willingly goes. You know, crucifixion in Rome, the only people that were crucified were those whom the state saw as trouble. Mm -hmm. If you protested the state, uh -huh. then crucifixion, if you challenged Caesar, yes, sir. and Jesus was a threat, mm -hmm. he had announced in his first sermon, and they knew he would be a threat because he said, I'm coming to bring good news to the yeah. poor. Yeah. I'm coming to help the dominated. I'm coming to help those that are, are in the sin of poverty created by man and who's, who, who've been brokenhearted and who've been captive. I'm coming to accept those that the other folk won't accept. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I'm coming in nonviolence as a direct threat to violence. And the other people, they believed in survival of the fittest. 
They believed in breaking people for their own good. They believed in locking up whoever they wanted to lock up as long as they could make money off of it. They believed in ostracizing certain folk. And in a world, they believed in demeaning women and their children. And in that world, Jesus said, I've come to forgive, cleanse, and set free. I've come to set people free of the sin of hatred and the sin of injustice and the sin of greed and the sin of pride and the sin of idolatry and the sin of self-worship. Those things that poison and damn the human soul and are the foundation of all evil in the world. No wonder in the Gospel of John the women are crying because the crucifixion looks like all is lost and the empire has won and oppression has won. And those who were with him, Holmes, all they were trying to do now was get out of Jerusalem. Yes, sir. That's all. Because they're killing prophets now. Uh-huh. And they killed the main one. Amen. And if we've been hanging around him, they're going to want to kill us too. Yes, so all they were trying to do is just get out of town uh-huh. and go back to whatever they had been doing before. Because in all the things that they had seen him do, he's dead now. Yes, he can't be the one. And in this context, there are two men, broken, bitter, bad off, depressed, delusional, dismayed on the first day of the week. And they're walking on the road to Emmaus. He's just been crucified, dead and buried. And the resurrected Jesus comes to them in disguise. <laughs> yes, sir. While they're still hurting, yes, sir. while they're still crying, uh-huh. while they're still mad, uh-huh. while they're still upset, yes, uh-huh. while they're still trying to make a sense of all of it, Jesus comes to them disguised. Yeah. Yes, sir. Anybody praying with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Has the Lord's Spirit yeah. ever helped you just when you needed it most? Yeah. Has has the Lord's Spirit ever helped you when you just didn't know what to do? Huh? Has the Lord ever helped you and you didn't realize till after the fact what the Lord had done? That the Lord had protected you from danger seen and unseen? Has grace ever found you out of nowhere? God just shows up. Lord, have mercy. Touch your neighbor. Say, neighbor, have you ever had an unexpected blessing? Hey, God. You didn't know how to pray for it. You didn't know how to ask for it. But God this time. Jesus in disguise. And he asked them, what's the matter? And they say, Negro, because these were black people, brown people. They say, Negro, <laughs> where you been? Uh, ain't you heard about Jesus of Nazareth, that boy that came out of the ghetto that we had so much hope in? Mm-hmm. He was a powerful prophet. God knows he was. And he stood up and he healed. And we thought he was the one to restore our nation back to where we wanted it to be and to make things right. And you know what? They killed that boy. Killed him right in front of his mama. Don't you know? And Baal, it sounds harsh. But Jesus says to them, y'all some foolish people. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what the text said. He says, Are you so foolish that you don't even know your own history? That you don't even know your own scripture? And that the scriptures declares that the Messiah had to suffer. For our sins to be cleansed, for our failure to be forgiven. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we healed. He, he had to be, he had to suffer. And I wish, I wish I, I'm praying for something before I die. I'm, I'm, I wish Christians and most Christian leaders would learn this. 
and to apply this to today and stop thinking that serving God is all about having an easy life. I, 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 I'm praying before I die to preach to a whole church full of folk that ain't afraid to suffer for what's right. I, that's got a spiritual depth to them because we got too many babies in the church. And they think all God is is a divine bell hop. You just come to God for what you want and never say to God, Lord, how do you want me to serve? And, and, and I, wish I, I, wish, I wish we knew our faith, our history. Pray with me. Somebody once told me, uh, 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 told me, uh, uh, McKinnon, I, I want to go to a church. This, this is what they told me. This is what they told me, Ben. They said, I want to go to a church that tells me everything is going to be all right, where I can forget about all my troubles in the world where I don't have to hear no preacher talking about poverty and racism and, and that we are called to challenge those things. Let me just get my praise on and my blessing. Yeah. Hmm? And, 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 and I said, let me talk to you as a praiser. Huh? And let me talk to you as somebody who knows God is in the blessing business. If that's all you want to hear, then you don't want to hear the gospel. You don't want to hear what doth the Lord require, that you do justice, love, mercy, and walk humbly before God. You don't want to hear woe unto those, Matthew 23, 23, who go through religious actions but leave undone the weightier matters of the law, which is justice and faith and love. You don't want to hear take up your cross and follow me. You don't want to hear you cannot know the power of his resurrection until you know the fellowship of his son. Suffering. And if you don't want to hear that, then you don't want a church. You want a shrine, a cult unto the God with a small g of your own understanding. Don't you know the Messiah had to suffer? And not to understand this is not to understand how you and I even enjoy or have the opportunities of the things we have today. Everything you enjoy, somebody had to suffer. Y'all ain't praying with me. Uh, to beat slavery, somebody had to suffer. To overcome the Holocaust, somebody had to suffer. For women to have the right to vote, somebody had to suffer. Just to make a minimum wage, folk died for that right. Some, how many of y'all got social security in here? Raise your hand. Somebody had to suffer for that. They had to fight. They had to endure being called a socialist and a communist to fight for social security. If you had affordable housing, somebody had to suffer. To turn America from school segregation, somebody had to suffer. To get voting rights, somebody had to suffer. For many of you to work where you work, somebody had to suffer. Wish I had a praying church. For your children and your grandchildren to go to colleges like NCCU or Chapel Hill or Duke or A&T, somebody had to suffer. And one of the worst things you can say to your children is, I don't want them to have to go through what I went through. Well, you may not want them to have to go through what you went through, but you better make sure they know what you went through in order for us to be where I am, we are today. But it's not just those things, huh? What in the world makes people today think they can avoid all suffering? Huh? huh? Must Jesus. <laughs> huh? M must Jesus, must he bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for me. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, you don't get no miracles unless you go down the way of the cross. Every miracle that Jesus worked was on the way to the cross. What makes people think, Bill? What makes them think 
you know, and put it in that another letter, many people uh, never become all that God wants them to be because you don't want to suffer. Mm. Poor Democrat. <laughs> huh? yeah. To get Trump out of office, somebody's going to have to suffer. Yeah. Uh -huh. They're they worrying, Lord, we might go down in the polls. Do what's right! Some folk can't, won't ever be a great singer. They can sing, but they won't ever be a great singer because they won't suffer. Mm. Um, they, they, they settle for the talent and they won't suffer the breakthrough to the anointing. Oh! You, 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 you can't ever be a great choir if you can't suffer. Hmm? You've never been in choir rehearsal till you're hurting all down here and crying. Hallelujah! Until you've been all over. Hallelujah! Yes, yes, You don't want to be no quiet. Not with Jesus. Uh huh. You just, I ain't fussing, I'm just telling you. You just want to sing just a little bit. Uh huh. And you're scared that if you show sure enough, let go. God might tear all that up and them ties off of you. And you can live a whole life in a church. And never be as great as God wants you to be. Preachers, you ain't going to be no great preacher. Just copying something off the Word Network and trying to make us think you studied. Huh? Just grabbing something you heard somebody else say and preaching a bunch of doggone uh, 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 little pieces and vignettes and stuff. They ain't preaching. I ain't preaching, going to the bookstore, buying a commentary, and reading that right. That ain't preaching. That ain't with authority. You will never have the anointing till you got some blood on your preaching. Hallelujah! 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 You ain't never gonna have anointing till you can preach love when folk are hating you. Sit down now, sit down. I'm preaching here. And you'll never be a great preacher if you just love your people and think, oh, they said I did good. That don't mean nothing. If you know in yourself that you didn't suffer, you didn't study, that you didn't crack some books and learn and pray with the Holy Ghost. Huh? Somebody told me one day, said, when I came here, they said, Reverend Bobby, you ain't got to do all that study in Goldsboro. You got a good voice. Just give them three points on a song. I said, but I love God. I, it ain't just about the people. But then deeper than that, I love the people. Huh? Because the people have to eat out of my mouth. And that's the sad reality now. Huh? I ain't go to school and suffer just to have degrees. When Trying, trying to hear from God because I know some things you only get if you suffer. Some people think you can get all this anointing just running the conferences. You ain't, you ain't run the conference and then can't pray in your own church. Huh? You might as well leave that alone. You don't suffer at home in fasting and suffer where you are. Some things you'll never get. Too many people just want it, whatever it is, but they aren't willing to suffer and go through anything for it. But God is still looking for somebody to say, yes, I'll go all the way. Y'all praying with me? If you're not, I'm going to preach in the high priest, Barbara. Huh? If, if you're in that crowd, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I told God I'll go all the way. Whatever the cost, I'll go all the way. And when Jesus clarified those things, uh -huh. one of the men invited him in. Yeah. Yes. How different would it be if we invited Jesus in? Mm. How different would it be if we acted like we needed help? Yes. How different would it be if this world invited people Jesus in? How, how different would nations be and people be if we invited Jesus in? Don't you know there wouldn't be so much meanness and so much greed? If we just invited him in, have thine way, O oh Lord. Have thine own way. Huh? 
There wouldn't be so much breakage in human relationship. We wouldn't have so many grudges and selfishness in the church and outside of the church if we would just not come in the building but invite Jesus into our building. Lord, have mercy. And, and the Bible says, and he served them. Huh? He was revealed to them as he served them. Something about the way he broke bread. Good God from Zion. Help me to preach here, Jesus. When he broke the bread, 5,000 could be fed. When Jesus broke the bread. When Jesus broke the bread, an upper room becomes a last supper and then the first communion when he broke the bread. He knew how to handle bread because he was the bread of heaven. And when he served the bread, it was just like serving himself. And as he served, the Bible said they saw him. Let, let me tell you right here, you will never fully see Jesus until you serve somebody. Huh? Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, you will never understand Jesus until you help somebody, until you bless somebody else, until you lift somebody else up. You'll never understand it until you give to other folk because serving is like a portal. That's why Jesus said, give, and it might be. Mm -mm. That ain't what it said. It didn't say might. Give, and you, and, and you can wonder if something's coming. No. Give, and you shall see the power of God. Give, and it, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down. That's why the hymn writer said, if I can help somebody. As I pass along. If I can cheer somebody with a word or song, if I can show somebody that he's traveling wrong, then my living shall not be in vain. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, life is too short for your living to be in vain. You better help somebody and help yourself to see Jesus. And the Bible says when they knew it was him, they wanted to hug him. But Jesus vanished because what God really wants you to have from him is not a hug, but fire. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. What God really wants you to have and me to have is a burning in my soul. And when you really understand the grace of his resurrection, mm, it puts a fire down in your soul. The men said, didn't our hearts burn while he talked to us? And then they turned around and went back to Jerusalem. Because they had fire, they were no longer afraid of death. They were no longer afraid of Herod. They were no longer afraid of Caesar. And they went back to preach one thing. It is true. He did rise from a three-day-old grave. And we've seen him. We've heard him, he fed us, and now we've got fire down in our souls. And I stop by to tell you, when the fire of Jesus is in you, you can't stop if you want to. Do I have a witness? When the fire of Jesus in you, when you're a child of the resurrection, it's just like fire burning in your soul. And when the fire is in you, can't no president scare you. When the fire is in you, can't no cancer scare you. When the fire is in you, can't no enemy scare you. When you finally get the revelation that Jesus did come and that he did die, he's fire down in your soul. I got a prayer this morning. I wish somebody's soul would catch on fire. When you got fire of the Holy Ghost, nobody has to push you to come to church. When you got fire, nobody's got to ask you to praise him. And I stop by to tell you, when I look out over this congregation, there ought to be some fire in Greenleaf Christian Church. After all that the Lord's done for you, after all that he saved you from, after all that he 
is resurrected in your life after all the ways he lifted you after all the ways he blessed you he picked you up when you were down all the ways he forgave you all the ways he loved you all the ways he made a way out of no way there ought to be fire down in your soul that's why I can't stop serving him there's fire that's why I can't stop fighting for justice there's fire does anybody know what I'm talking about I need a few people it may not be everybody but I need a few people that will say there's fire in my soul tell your neighbor look at your neighbor and say neighbor I really don't understand after all the ways he brought you back after all the ways he kept you from destruction after all the ways he guided you after all the doors that he's open for you tell your neighbor by now by now by now after all the sermons you've heard by now after all the enemies he blocked by now after all the ways he gave you your life back after people raped you abused you misused you and took advantage of you there ought to be fire there ought to be fire 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 down in your soul church don't let racism destroy you don't let sexism ruin you don't let homophobia deny you all the ways God has kept you there ought to be a fire burning in your soul do I have a witness is there anybody your soul's on fire tell your neighbor I feel all right tell your neighbor I feel the fire I'm a witness he got up and because he got up I'm up after all the beat downs I'm up after all the put downs I'm up after all the knockdowns I'm up and there's a burning there's a burning down in my soul that's why I'm still loving it's fire that's why I'm still showing mercy it's fire that's why I can't stop giving grace I can't stop praising I can't stop shouting turn to your neighbor say neighbor it's too late now you should have caught me before the coals got lit you should have caught me before he saved my soul but now hallelujah now there's a burning in my soul it's like fire shut up in my boat there's a joyful fire there's a transforming fire it's a motivating fire it's a cleansing fire it's a burning fire slap your neighbor high five and say fire 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 the fire of the holy ghost don't call the fire department I want this one to burn till I die. Burn till I die. Burn, baby, burn. Burn, Baba, burn. Burn with the Holy Ghost till I die. All I can tell you is since I met Jesus, there's been a burning down in my soul. He holds me with an unseen power. He keeps me from all sin. He changes me from day to day as I walk along this way. Since I met Jesus, since I met Jesus, since I met Jesus, there's a burning down in my soul. Do I have a witness? Is there anybody else on fire? I wish you shout fire. Fire. The church is on fire. 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 The 
Fire, pray 